My friends, it is finally confirmed NVIDIA did announce Turing architecture at SIGGRAPH just like 30 minutes ago. We are recording it right after. It is 2.45 a.m. I'm recording this video so that we can get it out to you as soon as possible. Uh, so I apologize if I misspeak or I appear a little tired. It's really late here in South Africa, but tons of information came out. We did get three new graphics cards from NVIDIA uh, and we got a lot of information about the upcoming architecture. Uh, there's still a lot of unknowns and things that we have to parse through, so I kind of want to take this as like an opportunity for us to really just discuss what happened at SIGGRAPH, what they announced, what they didn't, and what's still left to come. One of the biggest things about this announcement was that Jensen said, and it kind of seems like it, this is the single greatest leap in one generation, and that this is on par with the development of CUDA cores for them. He went on to say a specific number that Turing is six times the performance of Pascal. Six times the performance of Pascal. That is crazy. However, it's not everything that we might think it is or what it seems. We have to get to that in a bit. So one of the weirdest things that happened at SIGGRAPH was the fact that like they didn't really talk about Turing. Like they didn't unveil Turing. It just kind of came as a side mention from Jensen. It came after he unveiled the new Quadro RTX 8000. He just like happened to mention that it runs on Turing. Turing was not the focus of SIGGRAPH whatsoever. It was all about ray tracing and the new type of effects and lighting that you can get with these new cards, with the tensor cores, the new tensor processing and everything that's going on there. We have new ways apparently of defining cards with things like giga rays is now how we're gonna define things and tips, which I don't even know what that means. He wasn't very clear on that. I'm sure that there's gonna be a more technical breakdown by somebody like Gamers Nexus in the future once like we have better understanding of what the freaking heck a tip is. But apparently the new Quadro RTX 8000s has 16 tips. It also has 16 teraflops of traditional compute performance, which is basically not that much better than what we have. But one of the amazing things that we saw from its our ray tracing performance was that at GTC, everybody knows the Star Wars demo that they showed off with like all of the lighting and how it looked good. It was done in real time. That Star Wars demo was fantastic, but it was done with a workstation with four Titan Vs. They said, at least this is obviously we have to take NVIDIA's word for it, is that that entire Star Wars demo was run with a single Quadro RTX 8000. The highest end Quadro card replaced four Titan Vs. That's four $3,000 graphics cards beaten by the RTX 8000 in a way that was never before seen. And the pricing on the RTX 8000 is $10,000 as opposed to the $12,000 for those four Titan Vs. So you actually save a little bit of money because as Jensen says, the more you buy, the more you save. So there's tons of performance there. There's the 16 teraflops of traditional compute performance. There's 500 tops of AI tensor performance. There's the 16 tips. And then there's 48 gigabytes of frame buffer on each card. And then when you use NVLink, you can have up to 96 gigabytes of frame buffer between two cards which is actually just insane. Like if we look at traditional compute performance, what they showed was that Turing is about 25% faster as far as like traditional compute performance. You got 16 teraflops as opposed to a similar Pascal card being 13 teraflops. So there is a decent boost there, but then that's where all of the AI performance comes in with 125 teraflops of FP16 performance, 10 giga rays per second for the ray tracing core, which is a new thing that's on the Turing architecture. But besides that, like we didn't get much else out of it. Based on the die size, which is much bigger than Pascal, we're going from 471 millimeter squared to 754 millimeter squared. The only thing that we can assume is that Turing is based on 12 nanometer architecture and not seven nanometer. They didn't really discuss that. That was the strangest thing about this press conference was that the architecture was not discussed. If we look back to the video that Adore TV did on this, it kind of makes sense. As far as process technology, 16 nanometers and 12 nanometers, they're roughly the same. How Turing is likely going to get its traditional increase in performance is by architecture design, which isn't going to account for a massive change and then by e by increasing the die size by making everything bigger so that they can fit more transistors they can fit more things like the ray tracing core and the tensor cores to hopefully allow for ray tracing now for a lot of you guys who probably aren't into ray tracing you're wondering why does this matter for games 
a lot of that, it, it's not going to come across as they're trying to pitch it. Like that Star Wars demo is great, but nobody's gonna have a $10,000 Quadro RTX 8000 in their system to actually run that type of game at all. Like that's not gonna happen. We'll see that in a few years down the line, but the way we'll get this is in bits and bobs and like subtle additions to like reflections and things that are happening. And one of one of the things that was happening in our live stream where we were showing off what they're announcing at SIGGRAPH, where people were saying that like the demos in video were showing were unimpressive, which in, in a one sense they are because they're nothing we haven't seen before. But in the other sense, they're entirely impressive because we've never seen them done in real time before. Everything that looks like NVIDIA was showing off is a pre-rendered video that they play. It like, again, this could be their deceit and that a, a lot of it was pre-rendered and they're saying it's real time for the sake of like not getting across like poor demos. But if we take them at their word, which I think we potentially can here, a lot of it is done in real time, which is something that we just haven't seen before. It's a new impressive technology. Ray tracing isn't going to change how games play and it's not gonna make them look lifelike. Like a lot of the demos are not lifelike. They're still very cartoony almost. It's just like, it, it's a good technology to move forward, but the idea that Nvidia is pushing this wholeheartedly and exclusively and the idea that they're going to separate their lineup into the RTX and GTX lineups makes complete sense after how much they pushed RT ray tracing and RTX at SIGGRAPH and not the actual technology or the architecture that they're basing all the new graphics cards on. So then there, there was a whole bunch of talk about how this helps with like the film industry with Pixar and actually rendering out videos and replacing data centers, which all of that is great. And if you want to watch it, I'll leave a link to the live stream down in the video description you can click right up there if you want to watch the entire breakdown of Jensen talking about everything while I talk over him. But the thing that I think we can kind of take away from this is that for gamers, we are not. There is no chance that we are going to see a six-time performance increase over Pascal for Turing. It's just not going to happen for gamers because one of the things that they were saying was a six-time performance increase was in the real-time ray tracing demo. So the Star Wars demo was run six times faster on Turing as it was on Pascal. But the sleight of hand that Nvidia pulled there was that we never saw the Star Wars demo on Pascal. We only saw it on Volta. Guess what they didn't talk about at all? Volta. There was Hardly a single mention of Volta. I can't recall a single time where Jensen brought up the actual architecture that they're currently using. They just happened to talk about Turing. They didn't mention any roadmaps. We have no idea what's going on with the actual architecture. Turing could just be a refinement of Volta, and we have no clue. So the comparison of Pascal to Turing saying it's six times faster in real-time ray tracing, it's like, yeah, no duh, you didn't have tensor cores, you didn't have ray tracing cores, that didn't exist on Pascal. The only place it existed is on Volta, and if we take a look at the performance difference between the Titan Vs and the RTX 8000, that seems to be a four times increase in performance, which is nothing to sneeze at, but like a lot of that, it, we just don't have hard and fast numbers. I don't think we're seeing a six time performance increase in games. However, we might see six time performance increase gains elsewhere. We'll, set, we'll have to wait and see until we get them in our hands. We can actually benchmark them. We'll have to see if Nvidia includes this ray tracing technology on their mainstream consumer lineup. And then if games will actually adopt ray tracing and if we'll see it enough that we can actually benchmark ray tracing cards versus non-ray tracing cards, which for those of you who are wondering, AMD does support ray tracing because that is baked in at the like direct X level. There's direct X ray tracing. It's just that Nvidia is dedicating hardware on the chip to actually support that. Uh, whereas like AMD is kind of like with Gameworks, yes, it can run it, but it doesn't have the sort of like trickery that makes it run perfectly on the AMD hardware as it will on Nvidia. So any game that has Nvidia our ray tracing is definitely gonna suffer on AMD cards. There's no way around that. NVIDIA is gonna make sure of that. I'm fairly confident. But even though NVIDIA did not launch any gaming cards at SIGGRAPH, they didn't take a mention of it. They did, however, release a teaser on Twitter right after SIGGRAPH was over. So like five minutes after their keynote was over, they released this hashtag before the game uh, teaser video, which shows off 
a, basically what looks like a new design on a graphics card, people playing around with it, and then like they kind of tease the shroud design, which could indicate that it is an open air cooler like we talked about with the, the leaked rumor on Friday's hot news. And then it's hashtag B for the game, Cologne, August 20th which is going to be that Gamescom stream that we talked about previously, which we'll, we will be doing a live stream here on the UFD Tech channel, uh, so you guys can join us for that. And NVIDIA has specifically said that is a GeForce gaming celebration. The SIGGRAPH live stream, there was no mention of what we were going to get. At least with the Gamescom one, they are saying it's a GeForce gaming celebration, which hopefully means we will get some semblance of a GTX 11 or a GTX 20 series or RTX 20 series, which, I mean, the RTX naming scheme is absolutely confirmed. Turing is absolutely confirmed. Those are no longer rumors. It is a fact that those exist, and here we are. So in summary, NVIDIA released Quadro cards, three RTX Quadro cards between $2,300 and $10,000, depending on how many giga rays they can do, which I guess is how many light rays that they can bounce around with ray tracing, and then how much frame buffer they have, whether it's 24 or 48 uh, gigabytes of frame buffer. There was no announcement of gaming graphics cards, but those will likely, and I, like, I nearly can guarantee that they will be announced next week at Gamescom on the 20th. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell to stay here so that you get informed when we actually go live for that event. And I hope that wrap up made sense. I tried to collectively, cohesively put together my thoughts at 3 a.m. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content, including these live streams and all of that kind of stuff. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see your smiling faces in the next video. Love you too.